Jung's audition was a triumph. The audience gave him a standing ovation. And Amanda gave him her golden buzzer. It's Deliso Chaponda. I'm Delisa Chaponda, I'm 37, I'm a Malawian stand-up comedian, and I live in Manchester. So I started doing stand-up comedy in Canada. I was studying computer programming, so I've come a quite sharp left turn. I left Canada, I tried it in South Africa, I wasn't very good, and then I moved to Manchester. I travel all the time. I mean, I've spent a lot of years doing the circuit, doing little pubs, doing slightly bigger theatres. I would like to tour giant rooms, streaming, fans, and just always have an audience for my jokes. Sometimes I think I don't appreciate myself. <laughs> when I got the Golden Buzzer, it was the last thing I expected. I was so happy. You're bloody hilarious. And I really want you to win the entire series! Thank you so much! Ever since Amanda pressed the golden buzzer, I've had those 22-year-old dreams come back into my head and think, you can make it. You'll be the next big thing. You can make it. I've never won a competition. I think it's time that I win something. I really do. It's my turn. I'm ready. I'm ready to score the knockout punch. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for that welcome, and thank you, Amanda, for pushing that buzzer. Ever since you did it, my life has been bonkers. People approaching me on the road saying, well done, but the most common question I get is, you're from where? Is it Mali, Maui, Ma it's Malawi. And if any of you don't know where that is, it's where Madonna adopted all the babies from. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> yeah, you're jealous. <laughs> I do miss my little brother. Oh. And Angelina took my sister, so. <laughs> and I've been in the UK a while. I was tricked into moving here. I was tricked because I was watching television and I saw an angry guy came on television and he said, oh, these immigrants take all the good jobs, all the good women. I was like, wow, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Sometimes comedy, it's hard to laugh sometimes because the news is full of depressing stuff. But I think the thing is, it's misleading because amazing things happen every day, little acts of kindness, but they don't report it. They put it on page 10, they open with the doom and gloom. If the BBC News was a mate of yours, you'd never go over. Look, I'm not going to that depressing barbecue. <laughs> I'm gonna hang out with Cartoon Network. <laughs> But it's an amazing time to be alive. People say stuff like, oh, I miss the good old days. The good old days were terrible. We've got amazing stuff. We've got Wi-Fi. Mm. Yeah. We've got rights. <laughs> Women can vote. Yeah. I'm black. 200 years ago, this would have been an auction. <laughs> We've come Doom and gloom, the, Mal the Malawian press is a lot worse than your press here. I I'll tell you. Like, I did the first ever comedy show in Malawi, which isn't an accomplishment. I'm the only stand-up comedian, right? <laughs> and I called the local press and said, send a reporter. The editor said, ah, why don't you uh, write the review yourself? Huh? <laughs> you give me some money, I will say we wrote it. I was disgusted by the total lack of integrity in the Malawian press. But wow, that was the best review I ever got. <laughs> Seven stars! He's a genius! The African Michael McIntyre! <laughs> uh, but it's crazy I'm on television right now because my ex always felt I wasn't ambitious enough. She always used to be like, you're a comedian, come on, be more ambitious. I said, hey, I'm happy. She said, you're not happy. I said, I think I'm happy. She said, no, be more ambitious. I did not sign up for somebody who's going nowhere. I snapped. I told her, look, you knew I wasn't ambitious the day we met. Of all the women in the bar, I approached you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're laughing. I'm single now. <laughs> and I am looking for love, I'll admit. I'm looking for love. You know, got to get that citizenship, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's hard to date on a budget. 
I remember going for a date and the woman made a lot more money than me, which isn't a problem, we're in the 21st century, but I was ashamed. I remember the waiter came up, assumed I was gonna pay, put the bill in front of me, I had to go, huh? <laughs> I'll get the next one. <laughs> I felt so pathetic watching her pay. I wanted so badly to be part of the transaction. So I just took the change. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the British. I saw a beautiful British woman looking at a mirror upset. I said, what's going on? She said, can't you see? It's a fat mirror. I said, what do you mean the mirror's fat? She said, this mirror makes me look fatter than I really am. I said, wow, I think my eyes have the same problem. <laughs> a cultural misunderstanding. I'm from Africa. It's different. When we see someone overweight, we don't think go on a diet. We're more like, where did you get the food? <laughs> I think we gotta follow her home. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Amanda, are you proud? Oh, Lisa, I love you. I'm so thrilled. I have to say, I think that's even better than the first time we saw you. What I love about you... <laughs> what I think is so important about comedy is that it's, it has to be very near the edge of edgeness. <laughs> 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 and you were so on the edge that it made us howl with laughter. I mean, it was naughty, it was edgy, it was... <laughs> your material. Yeah. Michael McIntyre <laughs> can't take your stuff. Nobody can take your stuff. You are unique and you really smashed it. I'm proud of you. Well done. Thank you. 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 Do you mind reminding me how old you are again? I'm 37. 37. You look good. Uh, I have to tell you something. Uh, you are one of the funniest people we've ever had on this show. <laughs> I think you're... I love the fact you are so... Fantastically non PC. Yes! Uh, I think it's, I really do. And I think that's part of the reason why everybody likes you so much. I said this earlier on in the week, I'm going to say this about you, is that I do believe that this show can be an amazing showcase for somebody like you. And I would be amazed, actually, no, I don't want to say this because I jinxed it before, but what I'm thinking is this that you are the sort of person who, off the back of this, your phone should be ringing in three days' time, offering you your own show. Um, you yeah. should be on TV more often. I mean, the one thing I've noticed about comedians are they are quite selfish, and the same people seem to be on a lot. I think there's a real, <laughs> a real gap in the market for you, and it's your personality, your sense of fun, which I believe is going to put you in the final tomorrow, and you deserve it. <laughs> I second that. I pray people pick up the phone uh, and put you in the final. Um, when you were on the first time round, Jack Whitehall called me and said he used to do gigs with you back in the day. And I said, why isn't he the biggest comedy star in the country? He said, he's never been given the right break. Well, tonight is the right break. You're going to be a superstar. And you made us ugly laugh. Like, no woman wants to do that. No. We were howling. You're brilliant. Well done, Zelisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well. Does it get it down that, does it? That, that wonderful relief. <laughs> <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Brilliant. fabulous. Brilliant. If you want really to see Zelisa, stay in the house. until the last act has been formed. One more time, let's hear it for Delisa Chaponda! Ah, oh, very funny. Very good, indeed. Good, good. Now, our next act delivered one of the most emotional...